Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Travel Mug Podcast. This is Megan, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host Jen. And on this week's episode, we are joined by Elisa Hansen. Elisa currently resides in Iceland, as she has for many years. She's originally from the Netherlands, but fell in love with the country, as so many of us have, and now makes her life and her living there. We are so excited to talk to you about Iceland and everything you personally have going on there. So welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Excellent. So you, like I just mentioned, originally from the Netherlands, uh, my husband and I are actually heading to Amsterdam in late September this year. So just talk to us a little bit about growing up there and your experience prior to moving to Iceland. Um, yeah, so I grew up in the south of the Netherlands. And when I wanted to study, I moved all the way to the other side of the country, which is like three or four hours away, which is far, far, far away. <laughs> and then uh, after studying, I moved to the West where like uh, all the media companies are. And I, I worked in media for some years. So, uh, so I lived everywhere in the Netherlands and saw every part of it Yeah, growing up. So it's, it's a nice country, but not as great as Iceland. So <laughs> <laughs> nothing is. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, so you obviously now call Iceland home. So you went to Iceland originally for a few months to try to like slow down and, you know, take a break from your busy life. But then you ended up staying or going back to stay. So how did all of this come to be? Like, talk to us about the logistics of actually moving to an entirely new country. Um, well, like I, I wasn't really planning to move at all because like the first time I came to Iceland, I was just on a holiday for, for a few days. And I actually went because the radio station that I worked at, they were playing a lot of Icelandic music at the time. Uh, and I really loved the music. So I was like, oh yeah, Iceland. Yeah. I, I had wanted to go there at some point, but I just didn't think about it for some time. And then, so I went there on holiday just to like calm down a little bit. And I went on a horseback ride. And the girls that were working there, they were saying like, oh, it's really easy to get a job here in summertime because they always search for um, uh, foreigners to work here because there's just so many tourists coming and there's not enough Icelandic people to work in tourism. So I just thought like, oh, interesting. Good to know. And then I went back to the Netherlands and I cried on the plane. I was just like, I was devastated that I had to go back because I loved it so much. And then my landlord, he decided that they wanted to sell the house that I was living in. So I was like, hmm, I have to move. Where am I going to live now? <laughs> um, and I was working at the, the job in, uh, in media for some, some years already. So I thought like, maybe it's also nice to do something else after like the sixth at Sheeran concert. I was like, oh, again. So, <laughs> so I just thought like, if that's how I feel, like going to these concerts again and thinking like, oh, I have to do it again, then maybe it's time to change things a little bit. So I actually yeah. started searching for jobs uh, as a horse riding guide because that was something that I always yeah. wanted to do when I was growing up uh, or just like work with horses, not necessarily a horseback riding guide, but anyway. Um, so yeah, I found a place in the north and I thought like I'm going to stay there for three months. And then three months turned into six months and six months turned into a year. And then I was like, oh, just one more year, one more year. So now that's like more than eight years ago now. <laughs> so it just escalated a little awesome. bit. I was never planning to move here. Yeah. It just happened, actually. <laughs> right, right. And you have to talk to us about was your radio station playing the Icelandic music or how did that piece come <laughs> about or how did... Why did you go there for work? Like what were the original trip? Um, so I, I didn't go for work, but because um, there was one Icelandic artist oh, okay. called, called Ausgir, um, and he like he was like up and coming at that time. And we were playing a lot of like up and coming music at our radio station. So we were playing a lot of like, like pop music that was already like, like there, uh, but also a lot of up and coming music. And he was, yeah, we played him a lot at that time. It was like really dreamy, beautiful music. His name is Ausgir Trösti. Look him up. He's, his music is amazing. So yeah, that was kind of the reason that I thought like, oh, I want to like see Iceland and listen to this music at the same time. I yeah. gotcha. Understood. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. 
And so you mentioned, of course, too, when you visited, you went on the uh, horse adventure. You had always been interested in that as well. So when you found this this job there, were you able to move there as part of being a part of the European Union? Did you have to get a special visa to move there? Like, how did this job become a reality? No. So if you're from the EU, uh, and Iceland is not in the EU, but it's in the Schengen Agreement. So you don't need a visa or anything. Hmm. So within the Schengen Agreement, you can just move to another country or, or work in another country and you don't need a visa or anything. So I guess it's similar to like in the States, moving between the states um uh, or in canada also right. probably i i assume but a little a little bit more about the yeah. u.s so yeah. um <laughs> so i i guess that's similar to that so you don't we don't need a visa or anything yeah. so that's also why there's a lot of uh europeans working in iceland during especially during the summertime so it's very easy mm-hmm. to that, that makes sense so. yeah and like I'm super jealous because like being from Canada, I mean, I could move to another place in Canada, but it's still it's a boring. Thing, but different. It's but beautiful. being able, the oh, idea of just being able to like it's beautiful. I think we're just sick of it here, aren't we, Megan? After spending <laughs> the pandemic in Canada, we're like, please let me out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's just so interesting that you can just move to you know if you if you're from the Schengen area and moving within that's really cool and um, really great experience for people to be able to do I want to know about the actual moving like how much stuff did you take with you because that that intimidates me (laughs) well because I wasn't planning to move like I wasn't planning to move at all I just wanted to go and work there for three months and I actually my plan was to work in Iceland for some time and then maybe go and travel through the U.S. But I t- that was yeah. November 2016. And then some orange potato got elected in the U.S. And I was like, Meh, I don't really want to go there. Perfect. Um, so so okay. then I was like, mm-hmm. so actually, it's Trump's um, fault that I am still in Iceland. So I just want to thank him a lot for this. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> how things work now yeah, really like, yeah, he's yeah. such a good guy like I really like that he did this for me um so so yeah, yeah that was really the plan so I didn't bring a lot of stuff I just had one suitcase and like a backpack so that was all that I had yeah right. and I mean I, I have gathered a little a little bit more stuff now but I like I wasn't moving into a new flat without anything like I was just moving into right. uh one of the rooms in the guest house that I was stay, uh, working at and horse rental right. um so I didn't need stuff <laughs> I just needed clothes that's fair that makes sense yeah because was packing what, up everything and moving it no <laughs> and I mean before I before I came to Iceland because I thought like I'm gonna go to Iceland and then like travel around uh so I thought like I'm gonna be gone for a year or so mm-hmm. So I actually did like sell all my stuff in the Netherlands. Like I sold everything and or gave it away or like I had a party where all my friends could just like take the books that they liked or um, I, I kept a few books. But but just like I just tried to like get rid of it all, which was actually like a really mm-hmm. freeing experience because then you just you're not like responsible for all this stuff anymore. And you you don't look at the the like bookshelf and like, oh, I still have to read that book. Or I still have to do that. and so. It was a really nice experience, actually. Like, I was really afraid that I would miss all my stuff or something, but it's really not bad at all. So I can highly recommend just getting one time in your life. (laughs) I actually can, I can, I can imagine how that would be because whenever I do sort of any kind of like cleaning out of stuff or drawers of clothing and getting rid of things I don't wear anymore it feels so amazing so just to get rid of everything would probably be like you said such a freeing experience yeah and I mean I I didn't have a lot of stuff anyway because I was living with my friends together in an apartment uh, before I moved so it wasn't like I had to like empty my whole house it was just like stuff (laughs) um right um but it was like (laughs) I really loved the experience of just getting rid of everything. <laughs> I could see that. Yeah, sure. 
So let's talk about Iceland specifically. So there's so much to do. And Megan and I, um, I've been twice. Megan is currently planning her second visit. So we obviously both love it there. There's so much to do, especially out in nature. So what are some maybe like activities or like hobbies that you've picked up since you've moved there? Yeah, so I have so many things that I had never expected to do in my life ever. And one of the things is stand up paddle boarding. I like I have this really fear for like deep water, but on the board, it's not so bad. So I don't know how that happened. Um, but yeah, a friend of mine, she went to paddle boarding and I was like, oh, well, I want to join. And then I had a board all of a sudden. So um, I never expected that I would really like doing that. And like photography is also like I never touched a camera before I came to Iceland, my phone camera, but that was it. And in the the radio st- studio, sometimes we had to like take pictures of the of the artists that were playing there. So we had like fancy cameras there, but I was always like, oh, no, someone else take this camera. Like, I don't know how this works. I don't, I don't get it. So I really never touched a camera before I came here. And now I'm just obsessed with photography. <laughs> so it's a very photogenic country so it's really really easy to make beautiful photos so yeah it's an easy hobby to have here in Iceland and I also never expected that I would be knitting sweaters like that is also like something I would I had never thought about in my life but everyone's knitting here so you kind of like get lured into it (laughs) it lured into the knitting society I love that I mean, knitting is maybe not something you can do as a tourist, or you can do it as a tourist, but like it's not uh, <laughs> the most totally. interesting thing if you are here <laughs> for the nature, maybe. But photography definitely is. And that's what I, I wanted to ask you about, because you're exactly right. Like it is one of the most photographic, photogenic, I should say, countries I've ever been to. So talk to us about how you picking up maybe, um, you know, a fancier camera than a phone camera has evolved for you over the years do you sell your photography like talk to us about how that evolution happened for you in terms of photography piece yeah so the first year that I was here I just I only had my phone camera and I was already making like quite nice pictures with that so um some of my friends in the Netherlands they were like oh you should make a calendar uh with these photos and they were just like phone camera photos so I did that and it sold quite well so then I thought okay maybe I need a fancy camera (laughs) So I got a camera and uh, started photographing more. And then like I mainly like photographing horses or landscapes because I was working with the horses. So I knew them all very well. So it's nice to like photograph them also. And landscapes, of course, because everything's beautiful here. Um, But then like since since a few years, I've been like selling my photography as well. So every few months I try to do like a limited edition photo collection (laughs) um, and sell them so that's been uh yeah since two years uh, approximately I think Uh, no I started with the limited editions last year but like two years before that I was already like selling some photos here and there so it just like gradually evolved and I've been doing the calendars for some years I I stopped during COVID because like it was really difficult with all the mail uh stuff and I like I didn't like the mail anymore so I've started again with the calendars last year. So it like goes up and down, but hopefully like more up <laughs> eventually. <laughs> I love that because I feel like sometimes adults are um, hesitant to like maybe start a new hobby like photography, like knitting, something that they have never done before. Um, it can feel like really intimidating to like start something new. And I just... I love that being able to start new things at any point in life. I recently knit my first dishcloth, so I was very excited. (laughs) No, but I think that's like a very Icelandic thing as well. Like Icelanders are very open to trying new things and also like having new jobs, for example. So I've like started, I started working here as a, as a horseback riding guide and no one really like looked thought like oh that's really strange because you went to university and you worked like at a big media company in the Netherlands and now you're a horseback riding guide hmm? yeah. like no one in Iceland reacted <laughs> like that but in the Netherlands it was a little bit more like that for some people I think 
And here as right. well, like I worked as a horseback riding guide, but I also helped uh, at a sheep farm during lambing season. And I worked at a kindergarten the last uh, two years or like, yeah, last year I quit, but the two years before that. And no one here in Iceland is like, oh, why are you doing that right now? Like, they're all like, oh, yeah, you have a new job. Okay, nice. Yeah, you should try that. Yeah, why wouldn't you try it? So every everyone's much more open to trying new things and just starting new things. And, and I think that's like a really nice thing here in Iceland. Like, I really love that about the culture. Mm -hmm. I would too. That's yeah. great. Yeah. So like anyone who has been to Iceland, obviously it's captivating. I think people have to experience it to truly understand how you can be so become so engrossed with a country. And something you also like to do, even though you might have came to Iceland to slow down, you've picked up a lot of things. <laughs> so one of the other things you do there is uh, to help people plan their travel within Iceland. So whether it's first timers, return visitors, um, even Icelandic folks themselves looking to explore their own country deeper. So how did that side business come to be for you? That was quite um, naturally, as in like so many people that I knew in the Netherlands were, were like, oh, you live in Iceland. Oh, do you know where to go if I stay for two days uh, in this area? Or So I was doing that for a very, very long time for free. <laughs> People would send other people to me to help them out. Um, and I really love talking about Iceland. So that's also why I love being a horseback riding guide. Like you're just talking to people about what they love about Iceland and which areas they really like. So it just like happened pretty gradually that I was just helping people. And then after a while, I was like, mm, maybe I should ask somebody for this. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> so now I have a digital guide yeah. who can just buy the guide and like help themselves. But I, they can also book a video call with me and then I can help them uh, find the spots that, that are best for them or maybe even like find some other spots that are not on the guide because like everyone has different interests, of course. So maybe there are some people that love bird watching and they want to see as many birds as they can or, or they want to go horseback riding and want to try all the horse tours in the country. So it's just, <laughs> um, yeah, I really like finding the best spots for people and really giving them a good experience here in Iceland. Yes. I think it's so nice to have like personal recommendations from somebody who can like tailor it to your specific interests. I love that. And we've said a couple of times, people who've been to Iceland know, but why do you think people fall so deeply in love with Iceland? Like, do you, ha do you have a theory? Um. I personally think like because in Iceland you're still like so close to nature. I mean, probably in Canada you're also like closer to nature in in many parts than in the Netherlands, for example. Like the Netherlands is so full built everything. There's buildings everywhere. Yeah, I think like being so close to nature and also like feeling this power that nature has. And just knowing like, mm -hmm. okay, there's a snowstorm today. I can't go outside. I can't do this. Or it's sunny today. I have to like enjoy the sun and, and do this uh, today. So I think like the being really close to nature in so many regards is like something that people really still like. And also just the peace and quietness. So at least that's what many people no. talk about when they talk about Iceland. Just there's a lot of nothing, but it's really beautiful nothingness. Yeah, so I think that's the, that's the the main thing there. You're still like so close to nature, and you can really feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. We our first visit, we drove around the country, of course, not seeing half the things, but we saw what we could in the 13 days that we were there. And there were sometimes we were completely by ourselves. And once you get out of sort of South Iceland and the Golden Circle, and you get out further into the country, we always joked how there were more sheep than people. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't have loved that more. Like, that's exactly it. And nature, it, it is that there's a powerful pull when you're out there. And it's something I've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't wait to get back. So I, I completely agree with everything you said, for sure. And I know so many people that, like, left the country and were crying in the plane. Like, I've heard this. <laughs> people told me this so often. And it happened to me as well. Like, the, especially, like, now I can deal with it because I know I'm going to go back but 
very often I was just like, oh my God, I don't want to live. I don't want to leave this place. So yeah, it happens to a lot of people. It's a, it's a, yeah, virus. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I love that. And like, I'm, I'm a city person. I, I actually, I live in a, in a very small area, but I really enjoy going to cities and I loved visiting Reykjavik. It's such like a perfect balance for me of like city and things to do, but also really lovely. The people are so nice. It's not like super, super crowded, like going to New York City or something like that. Like it's for me, it's like the perfect balance of city and like ruralness, I guess. So I think there's something for the city lovers if you're not into um, being in the middle of nowhere where there's more sheep than people. <laughs> Definitely. I dream of that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't mind telling us, what would you say are your top two or three recommendations of things for people to either see or do in Iceland that might be lesser known but still worth a visit? This might be to help me as well. I don't know, but I'm just asking. <laughs> yeah. So what I always tell people to do, um, because not many tourists do this, but there's so many um, swimming pools around Iceland, just local small swimming pools. And many people just go like to the Blue Lagoon, which is not possible now because it's closed, but um, like to the bigger spas. While the swimming pools, like all of my friends that I took to the swimming pools, they loved that the most, <laughs> like all the excursions and stuff. <laughs> so um, it's such a local experience and it's just super fun to like be in these outdoor pools but because they're all, yeah, almost all of them are outside. So you get to like either enjoy the snow uh, from by while sitting in the pool or you can get to enjoy the sunshine and be warm at the same time, which is not always the case here in Iceland. So I personally like always tell people at, go to at least one public pool. Like it's just super fun. I really like it. And then the other one is the other thing that people don't expect, I think, is to have ice cream. Like you need to eat ice cream in Iceland <laughs> because um, people also don't expect that they can eat ice cream year round. But I think like most of the there's like ice cream shops here everywhere in Iceland. And they are open from 11 till 11 or something while all the other shops just close at 8 or <laughs> or 6 maybe. <laughs> um, so uh, having ice cream also definitely like a to-do. Uh, and you can also have ice cream at the <laughs> gas station, but just ice cream. And whatever you do, just also get away from the South Coast because so many people just stay at the South Coast and um, do the Golden Circle. But like, I personally really love the Northeast uh, or like the, the East or the North. Both of those areas are like, I live in the North. So I think that's the most beautiful part, of course. <laughs> but yeah, many people just like skip those parts because they think it's either like not accessible in the winter time, for example, of, or it's boring because there's nothing to see there. But it's just like not as well marketed <laughs> as the Golden Circle. So there's a lot, a lot to see there. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. We actually went to a public pool and don't ask me the town name because we just pretended we knew the town names the whole time we were there to ourselves, but we didn't know how to say anything. But we would go to a public pool when we were there and it was a really, really, we did the Blue Lagoon at the time as well when we first arrived because we had time to kill. But as we did go around the country, we went to a public pool in the north and it was it was really fun and it was a really unique, um, I would say, Icelandic experience for sure. And one of my favorite places that's actually in the east, we went to sort of a well-known area for puffins and I'm obsessed with birds. So I really enjoyed doing that as well. But yeah, I couldn't agree more. Like getting outside and experiencing the rest of the country is 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 where it's at, in my opinion. I loved the Golden Circle and I loved Reykjavik and I loved South Iceland. We walked to the plane, we did the whole thing, but once we got past that, it was uh, it just got even better. Yeah, exactly. I think like yeah, for sure. You, you definitely like should do the Golden Circle on the South Coast once. Like just go there first, and then like go and see the rest of the country. Don't make the mistake that you're like, oh, I have to see the Golden Circle last because that's like the most beautiful part. Because it actually isn't. Like it's 
quite boring compared to the rest of the country, I think. Um, so yeah, if you do the whole ring road, start with the golden circle and then do the rest. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's what we did. Excellent. Awesome. Good advice. I love that. So we know that you love and live in Iceland, but is traveling in general something that you like to do or not so much? I mean, I used to travel a lot. <laughs> But um, since I've been living in Iceland, like I mainly travel here or I travel back to the Netherlands to see my family. And then there is not much money left <laughs> at the end of that. Um, so I haven't like traveled a lot outside of Iceland or the Netherlands um, the last few years. But before that, I, I used to travel quite, yeah, quite a bit. So I do like traveling. <laughs> any particular uh, Any particular favorite spots you've visited besides Iceland? I mean, I really loved traveling through the U.S. and Canada. So um, that was definitely like I, I studied in Michigan for uh, a semester and then I traveled a lot through the U.S. and Canada, actually. Uh, but I've never been to like the West Coast of Canada and I would really love to okay. see that part as well. But yeah, I really, really love traveling through the U.S. and Canada, uh, but I haven't been there since I moved to Iceland. And besides that, like... I also really like Rome and Italy. Um, so those are good places to go. And when I was younger, I went to South America, which was beautiful as well. So I like a lot of places, but I personally like, I don't like like super humid, hot places. So Iceland is perfect for me. Yeah. In that right. part. So I kind of found like the perfect <laughs> It all makes sense. Yeah. So I found the perfect cl climate. So I don't really need to go anywhere else anymore. <laughs> I think that's pretty amazing that when you can find the place you want to be and you don't even feel the need to necessarily go outside of that because you love it so much and you have all the things there. I think you're 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 winning at life, Elisa, for sure. <laughs> I think that many people expect the climate in Iceland to be something that you want to like avoid, actually. But I for me, mm -hmm. like the climate is like the best part of it all. Like I live in the north of Iceland. And we have a lot more sun than um, than the south coast, for example. South coast has a lot of rain. We don't have much rain here. We do have a lot of snow at the moment. But overall, like, it's quite sunny here. So it's just, as long as it doesn't rain and it's, like, dry, um, like, dry air, then I love it. <laughs> so, yeah, the climate is actually something that just keeps me here. Excellent. And people wouldn't think that because they think Iceland, they think it's just going to be cold all the time. And you're and you are right. When we were there in June, it, it rained a lot. Golden Circle down through South Iceland, it rained a lot. And as soon as we got out of there, we didn't really have much rain after that. And honestly, Aquarari, we actually had some of the nicest weather that we had during our whole trip while we were there. So it that makes a lot of sense. And there's a lot of sunshine up there, too. I want to talk before we let you go about you know, you, you've you made this big move in life and obviously being in the Schengen area, it's, it's a lot easier than it would be maybe for for North Americans or, or whomever. But what advice would you give to someone who wants to make a change in their lives, like moving to a new city or a country in order to live a life that is more aligned with their goals or goals they might not even know they have yet, which sounds like you you've, those things might have changed for you once you got there. But what advice would you give to someone who's maybe pondering a change like that? I think like if you really want to do it, you're going to do it. So just don't think about it too much, maybe. Um, like I didn't really think about it at all. Like, and also like the things that I'm doing here in Iceland, I never thought I would do any of the things that I'm doing here. So just look at the things yeah. that you like in this moment and do them. And then you will like end up in a place that that you like or you will end up with a job that you like because you're you're like already doing something that you're enjoying so yeah i think like it's definitely like just don't overthink it too much like if you want to do it just try it like the worst thing that can happen is that you are going back home after some time i mean i never thought that i would stay here for eight years i could have just left again after three months but then I was like, no, I like this right now. Like, for now, this is perfect. So let's stay. So, yeah. 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 And even if it was 
a three month experience and you decided to go back to the Netherlands, like what an amazing three month experience that would have been as well. Like people don't need to commit to living in a new country forever. <laughs> you can like, yeah, I think just that's go what, try it out. Yeah, I think that's what's stopping many people. <laughs> like they're just thinking like, oh, if I choose to go to this country, I have to stay there forever. And like when people ask me, like, do you want to stay in Iceland forever? I'm like, yeah, I think so. But I mean, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. Maybe I want to go back to the Netherlands. So it's not that I'm thinking like I'm I have to stay here forever. Like, of course, like 50 years ago when people moved to another country, that's another story. But now at least like it's so easy to um, to keep in contact with people and also just to change your ways. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, you have 26 other countries to choose from, so anything could happen. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I can't imagine going to any of the other countries now, but you never know. Like, you never know. <laughs> That's right. I love that. So uh, tell us, well, we already know, but tell the listeners where they can find you on social media, what will lead them to your beautiful photography prints, your knitting patterns, and your services to help them plan the best Iceland trip possible. Well, on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, um, my name is Elisa in Iceland. Instagram has like, um, you know, what are they called? Little dashes underneath. <laughs> Elisa underscore. underscore. underscore yeah. Elisa yeah. underscore in underscore Iceland. Uh, but if you just search for Elisa in Iceland, you will find me somewhere. Perfect. We will link all of that in the show notes as well. So people can just go click on it and find you there. Thank you so much for joining us today. We always love chatting about Iceland. Any uh, excuse to do that. So uh, as for us, the Travel Mug Podcast, you can find us on social media at Travel Mug Podcast. You can also find us on our website, travelmugpodcast.com. Uh, you can support what we're doing here through Buy Me a Coffee or for free. You can support us by leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or also share the show with a travel loving pal, an Iceland loving pal. We're always looking for more of those. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.